Hey guys, it is DM Mark, and we are doing another book review today. Um, today we are doing it on Rapunzel. So, for those of you who have never heard of Rapunzel before, it is a murder fest. <laughs> the easiest way to describe it is just imagine a massive meat grinder where, at the start of your campaign, you should have every single player make like five or six PCs, and hopefully one of them of their PCs may make it to fifth or sixth level. Hopefully. So now, I, I say that kind of jokingly, but seriously, it is a murder fest. Um, they had a huge Kickstarter in 2000, I believe it was 2012 or 2013. And you could get the PDF. Um, you could get a hardback book. Um, I actually got the PDF. I wish I would have got the hardback um, because I later went ahead and I had to pay out of pocket to have mine printed out. And it is, I believe, about 650 pages. So needless to say, it was not cheap at the time to have it printed out, but an excellent campaign. I cannot say good enough things about it. Now, like I said, this is from Frog, Guide, Frog God Games and Necromancer Games. Um, it uses some of their older material. And then, like I said, this is the Pathfinder version. There was also a, a version for the uh, Sword and sor Sorcery. Um, it can very easily be converted to 5e or 3rd edition or 3.5 and even 2nd edition with a little bit more work. Now that being said, it is a large book. Um, as you can probably tell, this is this, the table of contents for the different levels. And there are, uh, I believe, about 30 levels of Rapana Thuk. Um, so of course, at the very beginning, they, they have a tribute where it talks about you know, what got them into gaming the original authors. And then it goes into the introduction where it tells you a little bit of the history, which I should say it's a lot of the history on Rapunzel. And then one thing I do like, before you even get started in the campaign, you've got rumors about Rapunzel. So the basis is Rapunzel was once this giant underground temple to Orcus. Um, there was a huge army of the, the followers of light, like the good guys, and they fought the bad guys. And then they believed Rapunzel was destroyed, but Basically, most of the forces of good were destroyed in that as well. Um, some of them survived, obviously, but they thought Rapunzel was done, destroyed, Orcas was banished, blah, blah, blah. So this happened maybe like a thousand years ago. Like I said, in your campaign, you can change it up. You can make it ten years ago, a million years ago, whatever. But there's tons of different rumors. Uh, kind of similar to my review on Rise of the Drought, I like it when they give you rumors that are true, maybe some that are false, some that are partially true. So, for instance, um, this one here. Knolls have been spotted along the caravan routes south of the foothills. There are said to be a hold up in a ruined keep overlooking the caravan route. And that rumor is partially true. The bugbears have been mistaken for gnolls. So then you have some that are false. Uh, the goblins of the dungeon are actually mutated giants. Although they are small and stunted in appearance, they are incredibly strong, which obviously is false. So, depending on who you talk to, like I said, you can either just do like a random roll to determine that, or maybe the GM will determine what pieces of information they're going to be giving out. You can give them certain hints and maybe mislead the party a little bit to make them uneasy about what they might be about to encounter. So, this is a, a side view map of Rapunzel. So, obviously, the, the levels go extremely, extremely low into the earth for Rapunzel. So you have some of the upper areas, like the ground level, and then you have your main floors. And then you have some of the little side quests and side uh, little th encounters. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and skip ahead just a little bit here. Um, one thing I did want to show you guys, like I said, the artwork in the book is outstanding. Very, very good artwork. And then the maps they do give you for the book are extremely nice. So obviously, like I said, it breaks down distance, um, even has some fine detail for like the stonework on the floor. Um, it does give you areas where there's uh, pitfalls, traps, um, arrow slits. Like I said, it gives you a lot of information. Um, the box text, one of my gripes is I wish they would have maybe made like some gray areas for certain areas of the box text and maybe make them pop out a little bit. Um, some of the books, like some of the Pathfinder modules, um, Rise of the Drown campaigns, they have those nice kind of different gray color uh, box around certain areas so it makes it a little bit easier to read certain things like this one here is for a trap um, but like I said the creature stats they do give you pretty much everything you need for a Pathfinder encounter so it's very easy to convert over to fifth edition um, one thing I like like I said they don't give you a lot of box text but they do give you a lot of information 
So for instance, on this one here, um, gives you this underground druid. So Drusilia is a vengeful druid. Her original animal con companion, having been slain by humans 20 years ago, lives in a small grove. She does not want to be friends and does not want to negotiate. So if she encounters the PCs, PCs she provides them with simple choice, leave or die. So like I said, it does give you a little bit of information on how uh, NPCs are going to interact with the party. Um, like I said, it doesn't give you strict box text in most regards of how something's going to happen, but it does give you a good bit of information. Now, since this is kind of an old-fashioned dungeon, like I said, some encounters aren't necessarily always going to make sense. Um, for instance, this one, this damsel's in distress you have, there's an area where there's like a ledge where harpies are living, and then in the actual uh, cavern below that, there's going to be dire lions. So the dire lions know that the harpies use their music to bring creatures into the chamber. So they're basically just hanging out, waiting for the harpies to bring food to them. They don't really like each other. The harpies actually hate the lions. They want the party to kill the lions. So the harpies are willing to help you to a certain degree, but both of them are still hostile. So they found ways to kind of meld some of those things together so there's not just completely random, like here's a gelatinous cube and here's a dragon. So they did do a really, really nice job of melding some of those uh, encounters together to make them make more sense. And another feature I really like for this book is, for instance, on this one here, it shows the graveyard in Rapanathuk. So when you go into the graveyard, it shows you different types of tombstones they might find. So this one is Rob Lukosk. He stood his ground. And then there's another one on the one-handed archer. One miss was enough. So some of these are going to be rather humorous. So if the party wants to know, um, you know, what's on the tombstones, you can read them a couple of those. Which so I thought was really nice and well thought out. Um, there are some custom creatures. Uh, for instance, this is a Gargoyle Green Guardians, which is from the Tome of Horrors Complete. Now, in the back of this book, it'll give you stats for some of those specialty creatures that you may not be familiar with. And the PDF will also link some of those, which I thought was rather nice also. Did I miss one? No, there we go. And now another nice feature, especially in the PDF, it gives you these wonderful mazes that you can print out. So I'm not sure how well the artwork is going to show on the camera. But amazing artwork. So you can definitely print these out full page or even blow them up. And you have a beautiful mat maze that you can have the party go through. And then at the beginning of every level, they break it down to a nice a difficulty level of that. What type of entrances, wandering monsters, if any. It's going to give you a wandering monster level. Um, detections. So if, if a level detects as evil or good or neutral. Um, if there's any type of shielding, it maybe uh, maybe healing doesn't work, or maybe healing works better in this particular area. Um, it's also going to give you some standard features. So it's going to tell you if the floor is wet, if the floor is slippery, if it's icy, um, if there's any type of like poisonous fungus or any type of notable traps. Um, it's going to tell you if if the tunnels are narrow, if they're if they're wide. It's going to give you lots of geographical information as well, which is really nice. I just want to show you, like I said, this level here, basically the same information. It's going to give you what type of wandering monsters. Uh, let's see here for shielding. Um, area 4 is shielded with an anti-magic effect, which blocks magical transportation, scrying, and summoning. So you automatically know before you start jamming in that particular room that the party is going to, if they use some type of teleportion, teleporting and magic, it's automatically going to fail. So I really, really like the way that they thought some of those out. It's not just kind of randomly placed. Of course, we have some more gorgeous artwork. Let's go ahead and skip a little bit to the end there. Like I said, I'm not going to give you guys too much information. And then appendix of magic items. One thing I absolutely love is when there's custom magic items. And this one definitely delivers. Um, this one is probably one of my favorite ones, the banana of holding. This dried and leathery banana peel is stitched up the sides with an opening at the top about the size of a coin. Only something small enough to fit through the opening can be placed in the banana, but it has a maximum weight of 40 pounds. <laughs> so the party at first may think this is just garbage, but if they do actually take a look, like I said, cast Detect Magic, there's some very unique items they can find. Um, Brazers of the Ape uh, basically gives you a climb speed of 20 in jungle areas, and then also a racial ability check for climbing. So definitely some really, really neat items that can be found throughout the quest. Um, you have some stuff that's Orcus-related, uh, Horn of the Flies, Claws of Orcus, 
some really, really unique items. And towards the back of the PDF, you're going to have a lot more of the maps for certain areas. Some of these can be used in more than one. So if you do want to print those out, like I said, these are actually printed out, like I said, one for one if you print them directly from the PDF. And some of them will be partial rooms. So basically you have, like I said, a print printable battle grid for pretty much almost everything in the quest. And the one final thing I love about Raponathuk is the obituaries. Now, I have not filled out mine yet. Um, I actually have just a notebook, and then when we're all done, we're going to fill it out. But you can put the name and the level of the player, um, the player's name, the cause of death. That way you can keep track of all this. And obviously they are thinking there's going to be a lot of death because <laughs> they give you a lot of obituaries. But uh, oh, if we can get the camera to focus there. My camera went out of focus. Let's see if we can get it back in focus there. There we go. So anyway, like I said, that is Rapana Thuk in a nutshell. Um, thanks, you guys, for watching. If you guys have any other books or modules or anything you want me to do a review on, please leave a comment below and please give a thumbs up. And thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys on the other side of the game table. Bye-bye.